Hello to everyone. My name is Nidal Gassoum. I am professor of physics and astronomy at the American University of Sharjah here in the United Arab Emirates. Uh, I have done astrophysics research in many different parts of the world, including having spent a couple of years at a NASA research center. Uh, I continue to do research here with colleagues from the UAE, from the Gulf, from Europe, and from the US. And my most exciting activity is when I involve students uh, to have them discover space, discover the cosmos, and participate in research that can uncover new, um, new things in the world. Well, I have been interested in topics at the interface between science or modern science, including astronomy, but even broader than astronomy, and Islam, religion in general, but Islam in particular, for more than 20 years, for at least 25 years. Uh, part of it is simply on practical ground. So being an astronomer, uh, I, I was always asked, so can we determine Islamic uh, events or Islamic dates, uh, the start of Ramadan, the events of Eid, Hajj, etc. Can astronomy help determine this? Can we stop the disagreements that arise from time to time? Um, so some of it was on practical grounds, but some of it was also on more intellectual and philosophical grounds. So uh, when we learn more about the universe and about nature, whether it is from the Big Bang theory or the biological evolution theory or a number of other uh, discoveries, uh, how do we relate all of this to our religious upbringing and education, our faith, um, uh, whether it is Islamic or other, and so I was always interested in this, reading, sometimes writing some articles, giving a few talks here and there, etc. And uh, for the past 10 years or so, I started to become uh, involved with the John Templeton Foundation in the U.S. The John Templeton Foundation uh, supports uh, research and activities initiatives that are in what they call the big questions. So they're not necessarily all religious questions, but they are big questions as, for example, philosophical implications of um, uh, cosmology or philosophical implications of the quantum world or of uh, biological evolution. What does it mean? What does it imply for us? And how to relate philosophy, religion, science, ethics, education, all of these topics and so I submitted a grant to them that I wanted to be funded for three years uh, to do a series of activities uh, of different types, uh, conducting workshops um, internationally. So we had one workshop here at AUS, we had a workshop in Malaysia, we had a workshop in Jordan, we had one in Algeria, we had one in France, we had one in Morocco, we had one in London. So we had a number of workshops to, around the world where we met with students who are, were highly interested in these topics, uh, gave them some lectures, interacted with them, gave them some topics to research themselves. Some of them ended up writing uh, uh, essays and, and publishing. Some of them decided to do their PhD on them. So that was one line of trying to sort of spread this topic and this interest in, a, in an organized and academic manner. Uh, another was to try to put together some videos that uh, we did and we put on YouTube uh, to address some of these topics. Some of them, uh, there were two of them done by myself, but there were a number of others that were done by other specialists. One biochemist, one cosmologist, one ethicist, one philosopher, one Islamic scholar, one uh, historian. So we had a number of people do interviews such as this for 10 minutes or so to try to explain why their field and their viewpoint on that specific topic in relation to Islam was important and how people should view it and learn more about it. So there is a series of videos on that. Uh, there were a number of other activities uh, such as uh, an, uh, an essay competition that we ran for the students uh, internationally. We had a, a summer school in Paris uh, for about 20 students from around the world. So there were a number of activities like this which we felt were very much needed and uh, the students, wherever we announced this, they responded you know, very enthusiastically. We had dozens and dozens of essays submitted to us to review and tell us and, and can I join and please take me because we were selecting students to participate. Uh, so so that, uh, that project ended about uh, a year or two ago 
after three successful years. Um, following that, I embarked on a little project on my own, which was also recently su supported by one of the affiliates of the Templeton Foundation, and that is to write a short book, a short book that I have tentatively called uh, The Young Muslim's Guide to Modern Science. So it is a small book addressed to high schoolers, maybe freshmen, university students, so they are at the age of about 15 to 18, 20, between 15 and 20, and they want to understand, so how do I understand this modern science? What is it saying exactly? Just get the clearest and most correct information, but also put it in the context of their Islamic background and education. So I, we don't want students to come and be lost in the science, and then start to say, oh, I don't see how this relates, and or what I was told doesn't fit with this. So we don't want them to have two minds. So I've written a short book. Um, I've pitched it to some publishers lately. Hopefully it will be published in the next few months. And that is also trying to help in the education arena with the young generation to try to give them some reference that they can read and benefit from and go back to, to try to make sense of all these things at the same time. Uh, it, in a nutshell, to summarize, my philosophy is what I call harmonization. So I try to harmonize between the religious teachings and education and the learning that we get from modern science without sacrificing one or the other. And how to put them together is not always obvious. And I am hoping to sort of present a template, a way to do it uh, in an accessible and reasonable manner for the younger generation.